and the Bears. The Chicago Bears. All right, it is a tradition with us here, Mike and Mike in the Morning, our 11th season of doing two-a-days where we preview in-depth two teams a day every day. So over the course of the next month or thereabouts, we will have previewed every team in the NFL. We did the Ravens earlier today. We both like them a lot. Now the Chicago Bears. I have a suspicion we won't like them nearly as much. No. The way this begins, we have Russell Baxter, the dean, the guru of the NFL Research Department here at ESPN, provide the five biggest questions facing the Chicago Bears. Here we go, number one. Will quarterback Jay Cutler thrive under Mike Martz's guidance? Well, I mean, he certainly has, the uh, we think, the ability to, but he throws a lot of interceptions, and in this offense, you're going to throw the ball a lot. So what does that mean? More chances to maybe throw interceptions. Now, I'd be stunned if he has an NFL high 26 interceptions again. Uh, but, you know, we all seem to love what Jay Cutler brings, yet Jay Cutler hasn't really brought it. We're all waiting for that breakthrough, and we haven't seen it. Certainly, this is an offense that could show his wares if he is to make that turn. So, yeah, I don't know. It's an offensive system that could show his wares. I don't know if it's an offense that could uh, show no, his wares. no, you're right about that. Where did they go out and get a playmaker on the offensive side of the ball? Where is it? Where is the player? I understand they have a good tight end in Olsen, but where is the guy on the outside of the field that stretches the defense? Where is the guy on the outside of the field that opens up the running game for Forte and that is a difference maker on the outside that Cutler can create some kind of great relationship with. I really thought they'd go out and address that need this offseason. They didn't do it. They went out and got Julius Peppers. That's the big acquisition that they made this year and that's fine. The defense needed to take a big step forward and maybe it will and we'll get to that in a moment here. And I'm not trying to diffuse any of the blame from Cutler. I'm really not. He had a bad year last year. He threw too many picks. He made a lot of bad decisions but he also didn't have a lot of help. His offensive line was bad, and he didn't have a lot of skilled players out there to help him. So I think there was a hand-glove kind yeah, of relationship. Yeah, but you know what? I'm past that, Greeny. I like the I like the guy too, but I'm past it. You know, at some point you got to make things happen. He hasn't made things happen. Well, I don't know. I don't know if that's fully fair to it's him. It's fair. Number two. In third year, running back Matt Forte rebound from a so-so sophomore season. Well, this is going to be interesting because again, going to this uh, this offense, this, this Mike Martz offense, I, I don't know how much they're going to run. Last year, he ran it 258 times and was was under a thousand yards 3.6 per carry that all has to go up if he's going to get the opportunity to run we know he can catch the ball tied for second in receptions behind uh, uh greg olson tied with devin hester as far as reception so he can do that but you also picked up chester taylor who's been an excellent third down back whether running the ball and he can also catch the ball out of the backfield but i don't know if this system will make him thrive in the running game not only that but you need to have guys off the line of scrimmage right if you're going to run the football I mean, you can explain that better than i can but but if no one respects your guys on the outside, yep. then they're stacked up in there, and you're running into a brick wall. Yep, and you only had two uh, offensive linemen start all 16 games last year. So, you know, what's it going to be like up front as well? But you're right. If I'm not respecting the outside receiver, I'm respecting that tight end. Devin Hester, okay, somewhat. Certainly a speed you have to respect. Love Greg Olson at tight end, but their passing attack doesn't doesn't scare me at I all. think Forte is a good player. I do too. But much like Cutler, and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm not giving nearly as much blame to him as I am to Cutler. Much like Cutler, it's all part of a larger whole and the whole fell apart around them last year. Mike and Mike, the Bears two a day, the five big questions facing Chicago. Here's number three. Who is the Bears' most dependable wide receiver? Well, that's a great question. If it's dependable receiver, it's Greg Olson, but you had that question was wide receiver. I don't know how you can't go to at least Devin Hester. I, you know, again, I'm not enthralled by this wide receiving core at all. But if you're going to pick a guy, I'd probably have to go with Devin Hester. He's led the Bears in receiving in each of the last two years. You know, that's a transition that I don't think anyone would say it has worked off the charts or even particularly close. It, what happens, what, generally speaking, great quarterbacks will form a relationship with a receiver, right. right? And those two guys will become a dynamic group together, whether it was originally at one point Steve Young and Jerry Rice, whether it was Aikman and Michael Irvin, you know, whether it's Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison. I think Jay Cutler had that to a degree with Brandon Marshall in Denver. Yes. They need that to happen with someone in Chicago. Is Hester good enough to be that someone? That's the question, couple, and I'm not sure the answer is yes. A couple years they've tried to do it with him as number one, 51 receptions two years ago, 57 this past year. So your number one receiver has got to be more than that. you got to be close to double yeah, that. That's exactly right. To make a difference. The Bears two a day, number four. Is former Panther Julius Peppers the tonic Chicago's fading defense need? Well, it's certainly going to help, but let me tell you, you're going to need that, and you're going to need health. I mean, this defense has been stung by injuries, including last year, right off the bat. 
to uh, to Brian Erlacher, who is back and hopefully will be better than ever. We'll see. But whenever you have an excellent pass rushing defensive end, that helps your defense because it, has, it makes you have to cover less uh, in the defensive backfield. If they put a couple guys on you, that frees up somebody else to be in a one on one situation. So it can do nothing but help this defense. The question is, will it be enough help? 81 sacks, third most in the NFL since he entered the league in 2002. Now, Peppers is clearly a major upgrade. Yes, they've they've gone for it in the last two off seasons, getting Cutler and getting Peppers. They haven't had much to show for it so far. Now, Lovey Smith is a defensive-minded coach. you got to build a defense around this guy. Rod Marinelli is there now. He's the new defensive coordinator. Expect to see some changes. There will be a major microscope yeah. on Peppers, right? I mean, in general. If things don't go well and that defense is bad with all the money that Peppers mm -hmm. is getting, there will be a lot of criticism heading in his direction. And that leads you to the number one question, in this case, number five, but the big one. The Bears finished 7 to 9 in 09. This season, these monsters of the Midway will finish. And he always leaves it to us to predict the record for the Bears or for any team as we as we go along here. The Bears 7 to 9 a year ago, they've not made the playoffs since going to the Super Bowl in the 2006 season. Um, when they had that magnificent defensive year yeah. and Rex Grossman was the quarterback and they went to the Super Bowl and lost to Indianapolis. And since that time, it's been sort of a steady digression. Yeah, it has. And it's really been as much the defense as anything yes, else. it has. You know, Cutler last year was bad, and that got a lot of the, the attention. But the reality is it was their defense, and you pointed it out, a lot of injuries were the injuries, factor. Yeah. But one way or another, they're going to have to step up in that area if they're even going to compete yep. in a division where I think Green Bay is a Super Bowl contender. Yep. Minnesota, Minnesota is clearly a Super Bowl contender. And Detroit is heading in the right direction. Yes, they are. They, they absolutely are. And, and what a year this is going to be. If this is another year like it was last year, you know Lovey Smith's going to be gone, and they're going to start anew there from a coaching position. That That's just that's the business. That's the nature of where the Chicago Bears are right now. Oh, they play the NFC East and the AFC East. Oh. That means they get <laughs> Dallas. Well, again, you laugh. How good is the NFC East? I think Dallas is uh, – Outside of Dallas, what do we know? Yeah, you're right. There's questions on the Giants and Philadelphia and certainly Washington. You're right. We always just naturally assume right. that that's one of the best divisions. And you know what? It can be, but there are question marks this year. Dallas, there isn't a whole lot of question marks, but the other teams, there are. That said, I think there are a lot of question marks about the Bears. And you know what? It opens with a huge game. They open at home against Detroit. If they should ever lose that game, yeah. and then they're staring at, at Dallas, yeah home to Green Bay and at the Giants, mm -hmm. that would be a devastating start for a Bears team that I, I hate to say it because Chicago is my adopted second home. I don't have a good feeling about this at all. I actually at one point on my schedule had them written penciled in for even fewer wins than this. And then as I was evening out some numbers in other places, I added one to the total. I think the Bears are taking a step backwards, Mike. I'm going 6-10 and 10 on the Chicago Bears this year. 6-10 and 10, and I think threatening to be in last place in the NFC North. Bad run. They went on end of the year, two, four, six, eight, nine. They lost, uh, what, six of their last nine games. I mean, it was just... They had that one really good Monday <clears throat> night game against uh, against Favre, and, and outside of that, they just looked awful late in the yep. season. Yeah, they, they, they really did. It wasn't pretty, and, and I was thinking of six and ten. I, I, I fear I may even go one less. I may even go one less and go 5'11". I, I just, I know what the new system on offense, get the ball out, get it to some playmakers, but then I say, where are the playmakers? If you can get it to Devin Hester, if all of a sudden he's got 80, 90 catches and he's got the speed to get some yards after the catch, I understand that, and I love Olsen, but I don't know if there's enough around those guys. So I think I'm going to start off, I'm going to say 5 and 11. Yeah, let me listen. This is not a good recipe. No. I don't, I, don't, I don't see much there on the offense, and I don't know the Peppers is enough on the defense. I hope we're wrong. Yeah, I do too. But neither of us have the Chicago Bears anywhere near the playoffs. Two-a-days continue tomorrow with the Dolphins and the Falcons. Mike and Mike in the morning. Yes, Radio.